What's the kingdom like? This is what the Bible says about the kingdom, and you're not going to get this really, really quickly. You're going to be like, you know, you might scratch your head a little bit. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Starts out small, but it keeps on growing. Mustard seed. Kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of great price. When a person finds it, they sell everything else to get that pearl. You see, if you see the kingdom of heaven, you get rid of everything else to get the kingdom. Nothing else is worth it. Nothing else has a value compared to the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. If you find it, you buy the field. So you own the treasure. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven or yeast that's been put inside a flour. It makes everything rise. Kingdom of heaven, very different than the natural kingdoms. Who can enter into the kingdom of heaven? Who can get in? Those who seek it first and foremost in their lives. You got to be looking. You got to be seeking. You got to say there's something more. There must be more than this. Those who repent and become like a little child. Those who don't try to understand it all. Those who just come and say, Lord, I'm like a kid with all this stuff. I don't understand it, but teach me and I'll grow up. And those who fight to get in. Those who press to get in. Because the kingdom of heaven is suffering attack. And only those who press in, past the obstacles, past the pressures, past the people, past the problems, past the pain, they're the only ones who get in. You know who can't stay in the kingdom of heaven once we get in? You see, what we, anybody can get in if they do those things. If they repent, become like a child. If they press their way in, they can do it. If they seek it first, they can do it. They can get in. But some people can't stay. Why? Self-righteous people can't stay. They went back to being self-righteous. They got empty, but they went back. They're like the Pharisees. Hypocrites. Those who say, Lord, Lord, and go do their own thing. They can't stay. Those who trust in money. For it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a person who trusts in money to get in and stay in. Those who put their hand to the plow and look back, like Lot's wife, who turned into a pillar of salt. See, some people are the salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. Yeah, but you're going to be a pillar of salt instead of living salt. You'll be an example of what not to do instead of an example of what to do. Salt is salt, but if it's lost its savor, what good is it? It's good for nothing but be thrown on the ground and stepped on. It's only good for melting snow. It's good for nothing else. The five foolish virgins can't stay. Sorry. Yep, they were virgins. They got all the way to being virgins. They got all the way to the wedding feast, but they couldn't stay. Why? Because they ran out of oil. They didn't have the sense to get some extra. You know who else can't stay? The people who are the tares. They can't stay. They're growing up right alongside the wheat, but they can't stay because they're not wheat. They're tares. They look like wheat. They look like they belong, but they don't belong, so they can't stay. And then there's another one. Gets into the wedding feast, got past the five foolish virgins, stop. Praise God, I must not be a foolish virgin. I'm in. But they have no wedding garments, and they get thrown out. Those who don't live by the principles of the kingdom can't stay. You know the servants who got forgiven a debt of 10,000 pounds? Couldn't pay it in any way, was going to be thrown into prison, and, and then he cried, please have mercy on me. The master, the king, had mercy, but then he went out and beat a servant who owed him 10 pounds and threw him into prison, and when the master, the king, found out, he said, you, you are, you're worthless. I forgave you, and you won't forgive others? Throw him in prison. And then those is one other group. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. You might want to look it up later on. Those who talk to talk... But do not walk the walk. They can't stay. Why would we want to get into the kingdom and stay in the kingdom? Because the benefits of the kingdom, and I'm just going to give you three. The benefits of the kingdom go beyond anything in the natural. You see, the benefits of the kingdom, you'll find them in Romans 14, 17. The benefits of the kingdom are righteousness. Not self-righteousness. Righteousness in Christ. It's not because of what you've done, but because of who he is. It's not because of what you, not because of who you are, but because of what he's done. Who am I? We sang. Righteousness, 
peace, the peace that goes beyond all understanding, will flood your heart and flood your mind and keep you in Christ Jesus. And the third thing it is, is it's joy in the Holy Spirit. You see, people want to be happy, and I don't blame them. Everybody likes being happy. I like being happy. My parents had a dog named Happy. Everybody likes to be happy, but happy depends on happenings. But joy is a fruit of the kingdom. Those who are poor in spirit are the only ones who can enter. They're the only ones that will stay and grow like a mustard seed. They're the only ones that won't put their hand to the, to the plow and then go looking back. What did I give up? I, I, I miss what I used to have. I used to go out and hang out. I used to party. I, I, maybe I can still do it. Can I just, the Lord says, you're free to do what you want. Praise God. I'm free to do what I want. I'm going to party hard. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it like I used to do. Just, you know, a little bit. Yeah. And a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. People who won't be people of self, they can stay. People who, can, who want to stay, they're the ones who are poor in spirit when? Every day. Every day, you got to wake up in the morning and you got to look in the mirror and say, I got nothing. I'm broke in the spirit. You see, you only get what you need for the day. What you had yesterday, you used up. We don't understand this. This is a kingdom principle. Whatever righteousness you got yesterday, it was used yesterday. Whatever peace you got yesterday, it was used yesterday. Whatever joy you had yesterday, it was used yesterday. That's why when people wake up and they don't feel like they felt yesterday, they don't keep following God. I just don't feel like I felt before. Because you're being deceived. Because you're not poor in spirit each morning. Because you don't wake up and humble yourself and say, Lord, whatever I accomplished yesterday, it was by your grace. Not by my works. Not by my ability. Jesus is the perfect example. In front of a crowd of thousands of people, he stands up after doing miracles, after healing the sick, bringing sight to the blind, after feeding thousands, he stands up and he says, by myself, I can't do anything. I only do what he shows me. See, some people like to make that into a religious, you know, article of faith. Well, bless God, uh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and I only speak what the Holy Ghost speaks to me. Praise the Lord, I only prophesy what the Holy Ghost gives me to prophesy. I'm perfect. But Jesus every day was able to get up and say, Father, I am nothing without you. I am empty today. If you don't fill me, my soul will get filled with something else. You see, you're going to get filled. You're going to get filled. But with what? With what? How many of you go out looking for cheap gas? <laughs> I, I, look for, I, I watch the signs. 253.9, 252.9, 251.9, 243.9, and I'll zip in because I'm looking to fill it up on cheaper gas. It's the same gas. It's just cheaper. But you know what? I found out that sometimes it ain't the same. Sometimes there's water in it. And sometimes the cheapness that I put into the tank gives me engine trouble. And I end up spending a 500 dollar bill or thousand dollar bill on fixing the engine because I put cheap gas in. You cannot get cheap Jesus. There's no cheap Jesus. He's precious and he's worth every penny. So every day, wake up in the morning. Every day and say, Lord, I'm poor in spirit. Everything I had yesterday is gone. It's used. I'm empty. Will you fill me? Will you please fill me? Because if you don't fill me, my flesh will look to get filled. We all want to be satisfied. We all want to get filled up. Come on. Somebody say amen. We're all looking to get filled with something. And something will fill you. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Oh, foolish living waterites. Do we want to become ites in the Bible? Do we want to be known as like the Hittites and the Moabites and the Jebusites and the living waterites? If we get bewitched, we will. They started off good. They ended up bad. Some people start bad. Some of you are used to, you, you know, some of you started bad. Your Christianity started off bad. 
people talked about you. Oh, her, she's not spiritual. Him? Forget about him. He's never going to make it. And they're still around. Why? Because they realize the secret. It's not about being good. It's about being empty. So if you're empty this morning, God wants to fill you. He wants to fill you. The devil wants to fill you too. You see, he's got his pump and God's got his pump. And the devil's price is cheaper now. Now it's cheaper. Later on, you pay. So I ask you to bow your heads and open up your hearts and say, Lord, I want to climb the mountain. I want to get to the peak of mercy. I want to understand your ways. I don't want to stay where I am. And every day I have to climb. And every day I have to start the same way.